Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofan at The Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about Gwent and its interesting decks to play around with. As you might have noticed, um, I'm in a particular position right now, and that's because today we're going to be talking about this bon seasonal mode called Entrenched. And as you can see, I am actually quite entrenched myself, which is very fitting because we're going into week three of yet another lockdown in Belgium. So that's quite fitting. But Entrench is a very cool, uh, well, special mode in Gwent where every unit you play actually gains uh, resilience. So resilience means that it will be carried over to the next round if it actually survives the onslaught that your enemies might be imposing upon that unit so every unit that has resilience at the end of a round will stay on the board and that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to just swaddle all our units in like this cozy little blanket of resilience and keep them on the board and for that we're actually going towards one of my least favorite factions but a faction that is always very well suited to uh, handle the seasonal modes and that is of course Nilfgaard. But all of that craziness aside, we're going to be looking at a Nilfgaardian deck that uses the Imposter ability to actually benefit the most from all the resilience that's going to be flying around. And the focus of this deck is going to be the very, very broken Thirsty Dame. So let's go to that card first. Of course, there's two of them in the deck, but the Thirsty Dame, whenever an enemy unit receives a status, boosts self by one. This happens every time, in this mode specifically, every time your, your opponent plays a unit, and it actually happens twice whenever you play a spying unit, because Thirsty Dame actually triggers on the spying being applied, and then to the resilience being applied to that spying unit. So you will get double ticks on your Thirsty Dames. Other than that, we have of course the Imposter ability allowing us to lock an enemy unit and spawn a base copy of its, uh, well, of that unit in its place on the opposite row and boost it by two, which is very handy to take out some key threats. Um, that also uh, combines very nicely with Vanamar, who allows you to destroy a locked enemy unit, so you can use Imposter on a very big unit, lock it, and then destroy it with Vanamar while also gaining a copy of it. Aside from that, we have a pretty standard uh, Nilfgaardian kind of spying poison combination package. We have, of course, Masquerade Ball, which is good to take out some of those threats. Usually, we're going to be trying to play this in the last round because, of course, uh, Masquerade Ball itself will gain resilience because it's played, but all the units spawned by Masquerade Ball will not have resilience, so they won't be carried over into the next round. So, preferably, you would play this in the last round. On Negromancer is also added to add a bit more consistency, allowing you to play more cards. And then Coup de Grasse, of course, damages an enemy unit by two. And if you kill it, you spawn and play a base copy of it. If it's a spying unit, you do that regardless of whether you kill it or not. And you can use uh, Coup de Grasse on either Joachim, who actually pulls a non-disloyal unit from your deck and boosts it by eight, the top non-loyal, a non-disloyal unit from your deck. So you can actually uh, choose that with Yennefer's Invocation. You can grab an enemy unit and put it on top of your own deck and then play it with Joachim in the next turn. So that's a very nice combo as well. Operator is here to actually spawn another Thirsty Dame. Again, the Thirsty Dame is spawned, so she will be active on both your uh, side of the field and a copy on your opponent's side of the field. But then you will be able to copy that Thirsty Dame even further with the, um, where are they, where are they, the Duchess's Informants over here. So you can play that to copy that um, Thirsty Dame copy you made on your opponent's side of the field and just make even more Thirsty Dames on your side of the field. Then something that's very strong uh, in this seasonal mode is of course Siegfried of the Nell, uh, who can purify every unit on the board when he's deployed which means that if you are behind on points, you can actually clear all the resilient stacks on the field um, at the end of round one before you actually lose that round or even win that round to get a bit of a head start in the next round. Because of course, Siegfried himself will be five points that will have resilience. Um, Cantarella also very strong in this uh, deck. Uh, just plays the top card from your opponent's deck, but I have been seeing a lot of decks that try to put cards on top of their own deck, so you can pull those immediately and just break your opponent's flow. Uh, you can also play Cantarella twice with Coup de Grasse, so don't forget about that. 
than Vanamar we talked about. Roderick can uh, allows you to pull um, two random cards from your deck and play one of them. Uh, also a spying card, so again, double thirsty dame takes. And then experimental remedy is used to pull that uh, dead thirsty dame from your opponent's graveyard back to your side of the field. So that's another way to getting a thirsty dame. Um, double assassination, double rot also for some extra poison. Imperial diviner, because again, those purifies are very important. Hunting pack for some uh, tinning. And then, yeah, just a few four point bronzes uh, with a bit of poison and a bit of locking as we do in Nilfgaard. So, this is the status quo deck. Uh, if you want the deck list, it's in the well description of this video down below. So, you can check that out right here. And now we'll go into a match of seasonal mode. So, entrench. And we get, of course, which happens so much in seasonal mode, we get a mirror against Nilfgaard. And I love that voice line from Alzur, but we got an Elf Guardian Mayor, so that means that we're going to have to try and make the best of this. The Operator combo with Thirsty Dame is not going to be that useful, um, but we might as well use it here. We have plenty of Duchess Informants, otherwise a very, very bad hand to start with. Um, I'm guessing let's get rid of the Hunter. Yeah, wow, that is a very, very bad hand to start with, but hopefully that gets better in the next round. So, opponent is deciding, do we get Thirsty Dames from our opponent as well? No, we get actually Soldiers. Soldiers. All right. And we get a Nilfgaardian Knight on top of that immediately. So big units, big points that are all resilient. Uh, and we don't have the means to purify all of those tags away. So we're going to have to start destroying things. But first things first, let's get the Operator going with a Thirsty Dame on the other side of the field. Again, those Thirsty Dames aren't okay. That's going to be nice. And it's going to be one of those matches. Those Thirsty, da thirsty Dames are not... Um, Resilient because they weren't played, they were spawned. But both of them get boosted. My opponent's one gets boosted because it uh, the operator gained resilience, and mine got boosted because the thirsty dame got spying uh, of my opponent. So that's why those boosts happened. And you'll see that ticking up now. So my opponent is going to play a unit if he doesn't, if they don't destroy it with uh, something like assassination, which is what I have in my hand, then um, we will see that going up. Opponent doesn't really know what to do. We get hit by a Toussaint Knight, but, because of, but of course those two points hit, but then we get boosted by one because of the resilience. Um, then next up, I think we should just go with another one. So Duchess Informant on the Thursday Dame. And look at the Thursday Dame now, boosted by two, because again, resilience and spying. And that's how we're gonna keep this train rolling. This one doesn't get boosted because of course there's nothing on the opposite side that got um, uh, a status. Um, so that's just gonna stay at four for now, but of course, if my opponent plays another unit, that will get boosted by one again. And that's just the loop that we're going for. So there we go, another Nilfgaardian Knight that's gonna boost the Operator, that's fine. And we get that. So now I think it's time that we actually start using our Purifies. So let's just get rid of the... Um, the resilience on those knights because that's seven points that would go into the next round and we don't really want to see that. Um, but other than that we don't really have a lot of options because the our hand right now is completely bronze as you see. And it's good for tinning but I hope I get at least a few gold cards in the next round because otherwise this is going to be a very bad first uh, match. So Roderick comes in and we get a defender. We get a defender. Um, not that useful, I think. I'm gonna purify it regardless, so I can grab more of those. And of course, our thirsty dames keeps going because of the um, well, basically the the extra resilience we got there. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to have that on the field anymore. So let's just purify that away as well. Not that much of a problem that we're behind because we can easily remedy that in a minute. Because uh, we still have the Rot Tosser. Um, and there we go, that's actually perfect. Because um, I still have one Thirsty Dame that has resilience. Um, yeah, might as well, right? Yeah, let's just put the Rot Tosser down. And that's gonna go in between these two guys. 
And then we can use... We basically don't need to, but I'm gonna remove... Do I? Do I need to? I'm gonna actually use the this time to actually put some thinning on the field, because I can keep this going if I want to. Um, so let's just get the hunting pack out there. And uh, there we go. So that's those two cards out of our deck as well. And that's that. So especially in this mode, since everything gains resilience, um, if you don't go, if you still have more than four cards, it's just better to keep going uh, until you have, well, not that many cards anymore. Because right now we have a significant lead. Um, we have card advantage in the next round. Um, and our opponent needs to play a few cards to actually go ahead of us. Um... Hmm, that's better at least, but I'm going to get rid of the uh, Fangs of the Empire. And yeah, again, the Van Morlem Hunter then. Oh, wow. This is a really bad draw. doesn't really matter because we still have the benefit of the Thirsty Dame that's still on the field. So yeah, our opponent might actually be struggling to get enough value on the field with those two cards. Shouldn't be too problematic, but uh, it's probably not ideal for them. So that's Kuda Gras. That's going to be Roderick again. Um, that's actually a smart play because you get um, Kuda Gras back in the next round. So Roderick losing them another golden card, though. So why am... Oh, and there we have Cantarella. That is more annoying. So that might be... Okay, that's not too bad, actually. Because uh, the Rotosser, I mean, they need another poison card if they want to finish that. And I don't even have a use for all of that. Okay. So Cow Carcass on those two. And then, of course, should take out the Thirsty Dame next. That wasn't actually a lot of points. I'm still 11 points ahead. Taking out the Thirsty Dame is five. So it needs, they need at least seven more points from that. The only problem is, is that I don't have resilience now, so that's only six. Not even six, because um, that's seven, seven, because it takes the uh, the Roderick probably. Up to it, and that's not enough. And we get the leader ability there. Okay, that is actually pretty smart. So now Morv Morvron will be played. He um, will pull three cards, but I think he gains resilience as well, right? And that puts us even again. I think so. Unless, of course, we get um, Afran, Afran, Afran uh, at the top of the deck. And that one will be played as well. That's an extra five points. And that's time. But there we go. We're even again, so... That's not ideal. So we're going into the final round with card advantage, but with a lot less points on the board. Because, of course, there's resilience units. That's about 16 points are going to stay on the field, and that Toussaint Knight is also going to stay on the field. And he takes out Cantarella, which is weird, because he could have used that to play that again with Coup de Gras, but nevertheless, um, we go into the next round with one card advantage, but 16 points behind, so that's not ideal, but we do get uh, Masquerade Ball and Oneromancy. Okay, it's actually pretty good. I'm going to get rid of the second assassination, uh, and Siegfried is useless in the final round. Well, not completely useless, but it's uh, a way to purify that we don't really care about too much, I think. Yeah, let's just get rid of him. And there we get Coup de Gras. Okay, and I think we got most of the goals out there. I could play Cantarella with Oneiromancy, just to annoy our opponent a bit further. Yeah, this is looking pretty good, because I also have my leader ability still, and our opponent does not. I have Vanimar, so I can just take out the biggest threat on the board by the end of this. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we should probably start with... Hmm. That is an engine, so I might want to take that out first. Uh, so let's just assassinate that thing. There we go. Start out slow. We want to take out our, our opponent's engines. And those uh, archers are definitely dangerous engine cards, because every spying unit gains them another charge of damage. So we want to take those out as early as possible. I'm actually realizing that I probably shouldn't play, yeah, I shouldn't play um, Cantarella with Oneiromancy because uh, Roderick is still in my hand as well and that also pulls two gold cards. But 
We get another Gonaire Mancy from our opponent. And that goes into yet another Nilf Guardian Knight. So that's seven points. Those seven points are still going. Um, I'm gonna use Masquerade Ball now. If I get lucky, I actually get two Thirsty Dames down, but I'm guessing we're finally gonna get some removal against us. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. And we get just damaged. Just damage, but we get, again, one extra boost from that. And that is actually good, because now uh, we basically can use another Thirsty Dame. Get um, the Fangs on the board and poison that Nilf Guardian Knight, boosting the new Thirsty Dame to 5 and the old one back to 4. So that's a good base to start from. And then I think I can use the... Um, the Duchess informants to actually grab the Rottlosser again. Um, we can put the Rottlosser in between. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's grab uh, the Rottlosser over here. Put the Rottlosser down. And that gives us another spying unit. And put that in between the Nilfgaardian Knight and Morvron. So that gives us four boosts on both of the Thirsty Dames. You can see that ramping up rather quickly there. And more poison in a minute as well once that uh, cow actually dies. That cow carcass explodes into a cloud of poison. Um, and then we get Vincent from Morleham, of course, destroying that one Thirsty Dame. It's not too much of a problem. Um, I know Cantarella is actually gone. Um, I have another poison in my hand. I should probably play um, Roderick first. So Roderick is gonna... What do I do here? I could actually... Wait a second. I could Oneromancy. I could Oneromancy and play that last Thirsty Dame. We get another poison from that. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do actually. So let's put pull out another Thirsty Dame. So that's our, what, fourth or fifth one this match. Uh, play another Fangs right next to that, take out the Nilf Guardian Knight, and that puts us to equal points in one fell swoop. I have more plans because this is getting rather interesting. Uh, I'm gonna grab the Vincent van Morlehem probably with Invocation, although it's not that much... It's not that big of a, an advantage points-wise. Um, now that I have two Thirsty Dames again, I might as well use uh, Roderick. That's one spying unit into Cantarella. So that's another spying unit giving us again four boosts in one go. So Cantarella and then we get another soldier and that's the uh, damage engine at the front, the Alba Pikeman. And that keeps on going. That's more damage for us. So uh, we took the lead even though we were 16, remember we were 16 points behind before the uh, when the round started. But we uh, completely overtook that. Yeah, we're gonna get another Yennefer Invocation. That's not too bad. I might be able to do the same in a minute. Um, so let's just put Joachim on there. Again, another spying unit. And grab... Ooh, and we get lucky with another uh, Fangs of the Empire there. Uh, and take out Morvron in the back. That gives us, again, a 12 and a 13 point unit on the field. And more damage coming in. So even though we lost our 12 or 30 point Thirsty Dame, we recovered from that rather quickly. Now, what's going to happen in the next bit? Um, I don't think they can pull that Thirsty Dame from their own um, deck again. But remember, I kind of forgot about that myself. Um, he put that on his own uh, deck there. So if I use Coup de Grasse to grab Cantarella again, um, we can actually pull that Thirsty Dame back from his deck. <laughs> there we go. I put that on the field. Um, do we need to have something else that's actually really useful as an engine? I don't think so. There's really nothing useful for me just yet. So, still three points ahead. I think we have this in the bag. Because we still have Imposter with Vanamar, so we can take out any big unit that still comes across our view. Uh, we won't be able to play the the unit that they are going to play next with um, um, Joachim again. But there we go, Coup de Grasse. He can't kill, they can't kill anything, I think. So that's just going to be a dead card. 
Yeah, okay. I don't even need to do anything anymore. I'm gonna get another point, so let's just, yeah. I was gonna pass, but uh, no patience there. Um, there we go. Opponents forfeited. And there you can see the power of the uh, swarming thirsty dames in here. Because, uh, yeah, this deck is really, really powerful in Entrench. And, uh, yeah, you can check out the deck list in the description. Uh, let's look at the deck one more time. So the main draw again of the status quo deck is the Thirsty Dames. As you saw, the operator combo with the Thirsty Dames allows you to pull two extra Thirsty Dames from that opposing Thirsty Dame, giving you three. Then there's actually two Thirsty Dames in the deck itself. You can pull out the dead Thirsty Dame uh, after the first round, the one that you created with Operator, which gives you another one. Um, and then we have, of course, the one that you get from Masquerade Ball, which is, I think, the last one you can make, right? Um, yeah, that's basically what you can make. Um, unless, of course, what just happened in the last uh, match, you get invocated, you get invocation uh, on yourself, on one of the Thirsty Dames that have been growing. You can pull that Thirsty Dame once more from your opponent's deck with Kantagala as we just did. So there's a lot of options in this deck that you can uh, play around with and be creative with as we uh, just demonstrated quite nicely. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. It's going to be the end of this episode. Um, kind of focusing on the seasonal mode for once. We don't do that very often, but I got it uh, early enough in the season this time. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if there's any feedback you want to give me in the comment section down below. We can discuss this deck further there. And as I said, the Play Gwent link for this deck is also available in the description. So check it out and give it a like up there because that would be really, really appreciated. So thank you guys. And for watching. I hope to see you in the next episode of Quentage. Goodbye!